Hey Comets, welcome to another week of learning. Um, we're going to be working on the last packet of the school year. I know, it's hard to believe, but we are there. Um, just a few more days left, a uh, week and a half. Uh, got, probably haven't gotten the packet yet, at least we haven't at our house. Um, that's okay, and uh, you're welcome to watch these once you get them. Or if you are ready to go, you can be watching um, and working along with the video, or you can go to the website uh, that I showed you a while ago on a previous video, and you can get the packet digitally from the, the, the either CMA's website or the district website. All right, so here we are. Math for week seven and week eight. Today we're starting week seven. So the first page in week seven is independent and dependent variables. Okay, we talked about this um, earlier this year. Uh, let's review. When one quantity depends on another in a real-world problem situation, it is said to be the dependent variable. Okay, makes sense? If it's the dependent, it depends. The quantity on which the depends is called the independent quantity. Okay, the variable that represents the independent quantity is called the independent variable, naturally, and the variable that represents the independent quantity is called the dependent variable. So, what we need to learn how to do is find what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable. Okay, which depends on which. So let's look at this example. Identify the independent and the dependent quantity and write an equation to represent the relationship. Okay, a lawn care service charges $50 for each acre they mow. Okay, so you think, what part of the situation is free to change or to be independent? Okay, I also think of this as the cause and effect. Okay, the if-then, all right? So what's, what's causing the change, right? So a lawn care service charges $50 for each acre they mow. Okay, well, the amount we will spend or we will pay for this lawn care service depends on what? Okay, the cause is how much they mow. Okay, that's the cause. The effect is the amount of money is going to go up. All right, cause and effect. So the number of acres mowed is the independent, and the part of the situation that changed based on the number, the effect, is the total cost. All right, so numbers of acres is the dependent quantity, total acres is the independent quantity. Now, what did it tell us? Well, for every acre, right, x, our independent quantity, we have to pay $50, and that's y going to be our total cost, okay? I'm thinking this has got a little bit mixed up here a little bit, okay? I think the number of acres should be over here, and the total cost should be over here, all right? That's my, my take on that, but I could be wrong. Typos happen. I do them all the time. All right, we're going to move on. Rate situation, identify the independent and dependent quantity and write an equation to represent the relationship. Wanda earns $2 for every, book, or sorry, for every box of fruit sold as a fundraiser. Okay, well... Let's see, Wanda earns $2, okay, for every box of fruit sold at the fundraiser. Well, the number of boxes is something that's changing. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot that. Remember, we want to look for the two things that are changing. Number of boxes sold is one of them, and the amount of money. Okay, so I'm kind of abbreviating here. All right, so take a closer look. So number of boxes sold and the amount of money made. Now let's look at the situation. What depends on what? Okay, Wanda earns $2 for every box. So the amount of money I make depends on number, number of boxes I sell. All right, so this is going to depend on this. So... This is going to be our dependent, and this is going to be our independent, okay? All right, because the independent is our cause. If we sell more boxes, then we're going to get more money. If we sell less boxes, we're going to get less money, cause and effect, okay? So I think that's all we need to do there, right? Oh, now write an equation. Ooh, okay, they're stepping up the rigor here a little bit. That's okay. So what we want to do is determine a variable for each, okay? So how about we say this is B, 
for boxes. And then this is um, A for amount. How's that? Okay. So what we want to do is the number of boxes we sell, B, is not equal to the amount of money we make. Okay. So it's not like we sell one box, we get $1. Okay. We get two boxes, we get $2. So these are not equal to each other. All right. A is not equal to B. So, but what, what is the relationship? Okay. Well, go back to the reading here. It says for every box you sell, you get $2. So for every B, every box I sell, I get $2, meaning I'm going to multiply 2 times B to get my A. So 2 times B gives me my A. All right? Okay. So that's how you go about those. All right? What are the two changing quantities? Which is independent, which is dependent. Remember, what's cause and effect. And then you write an equation based on that. Give each, each quantity a variable, like I did here. And then you set up an equation. All right? Now, analyzing graphs. Okay. So you can use the graph to determine how many pretzels Nick sold if he collected $10. Okay. So we can go here, and we can find the $10 under the amount of money collected. Just read the headings, and you'll know which number line you're looking at. Okay, we're looking at the Y number line, or the Y axis, if you will. $10 is where we're looking. We go over here until we hit our graphed line, and then I need to go straight down. Okay? And what number would that be right there? Okay? Well, it looks like it might be 9 because it's one space F in front of the 10. But let's be careful. Let's make sure we're not counting by something other than 1s. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, it's not going to be 1s, right? Because I don't see uh, 9 lines in between. So it's going to be counting by 2s. 2, 4, 6, 8. So this would be 8 pretzels. Okay, so how many pretzels did Nick sell if he collected $10? Well, we know he sold 8 pretzels. So this first question that doesn't really have a number, how many pretzels? I'm going to abbreviate here. How many pretz if made $10? The answer would be eight pretzels. Okay? And that's just using the graph. All right, now we could... All right, now we could uh, use the graph for these other ones, I think. Let's find out. How many pretzels did Nick sell if he collected $25? Okay, well, let's see here. I don't want to look on this line because that's the number of pretzels. I want to look over here at the money. Okay, $25 is halfway between 20 and 30, so I'm looking right here. And I'm going to go across on my graph until I get to be right there. And then I'm going to go straight down... I think I lost it a little bit. Go straight down. There it is. Right over the number 20. Okay? So he sold 20 pretzels if he earns $25. Okay? What about 3375? Can we get that exact using our graph? Um, I'm not so sure about that. Okay? $33. Well, I can kind of zero in on that because it's going to be less than $35, which is here in the middle. And it's probably going to be about right there. Now, I could get close, but I'm not going to be very confident that this is an exact number. So let's look back at our situation. Okay? It says the x value of the point where your horizontal line intersects with both the graph of 1.25x is the number of pretzels sold for $10. Huh, interesting. Okay, so I guess they're reducing it down to one. How much would it cost for one? So, you know what I could do? I could use an equation instead. All right, so what would that equation be? Well, I know that if I, if I buy 20 pretzels, I get $25, right? And I, they tell me it's $1.25 per pretzel. So if my Y equals how much I get, right? and my x represents how many pretzels I sold, I could just multiply the number of pretzels sold by $1.25, and I would get the amount of money. Okay, Or I could go backwards. 
I could start by writing my 3375 that I made and figure out what x would need to be, the number of pretzels sold, to get that 3375. So let's do a little bit of the math and let's figure that out. All right, so since I've got 3375 is what I made, each pretzel costs $1.25, okay, times x, I need to, since x is being multiplied, divide both sides by $1.25. Okay, so basically it's going to be 3375 divided by $1.25. And let's pull up a calculator and let's calculate that out. So I've got a dollar, sorry, no, 3375 divided by $1.25. It'd be nice if my calculator actually worked. 3375 divided by $1.25. Boom, 27. Okay, so my x is going to equal 27. And again, what does x represent? x represents my number of pretzels. So I would say 27 pretzels. So you see, sometimes the graph's not going to be helpful. It's going to be the equation that's going to be helpful. All right? So try that out on the next few, okay? And see what you come up with. All right? Thank you guys for staying engaged and working through this. Let me know if you have any questions. You can email me or post something on the Google um, Classroom page. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.